How's it going guys, it's Mr. Lone Wolf and uh, today I'm finally going to go and do this uh, Northern Bridge mission where I've got just got to go over here, grab uh, two lots of metal planks, follow that road back round and uh, yeah, like I said, I've not built this for a little while because I'm still having quite a lot of fun cutting across the river I still think that may well be my uh, preferred route but in the interest of uh, ticking things off the list I've also been trying a few other missions tonight and uh, yeah, things are going a bit slow so I was like, sod it, I'll rebuild the bridge I just left this in quickly just to remind myself uh, with the snorkels, I believe they fixed it for this Antarctic, was it the Azov 4220 or something? Uh, yeah, this is the truck I'm going to use, because when I used the Cat 745C the other day, that was actually handling this map pretty well, all things considered. And uh, like I say, yeah, I've tried a few missions earlier, not that they went wrong or anything, they were just a bit kind of, yeah, slow and bland. Uh, I did, I think it was Aid Thy Neighbour or Help Thy Neighbour, whatever one it was called. Um, I had to kind of go, there's a frozen lake kind of up in the mountains, head there, grab a trailer and then take it across the lake, which is a bit of a troll, a lot of breaking ice, but you can kind of see a path in the ice on certain sections where the ice isn't breakable. Um, yeah, I did it in the White Western Star, and again, to be fair, that's like, it's a fairly decent truck still. It's one of those trucks where it isn't, it's, like, it's not outstanding or anything, but it's all around a pretty solid truck. Uh, yeah, it used to be my crane truck for quite a while. But yeah, as I say, it was just, I wasn't too happy with it, so in the end I thought I'll come and do this quickly, because like I said, I, uh, yeah, helped speed my map up a bit, possibly. But I still do prefer cutting over here, and uh, yeah, testing this thing out. It got a little bit bogged down at first, but when I uh, stuck it in low range with the diffs on, this thing definitely makes a pretty big difference, a pretty noticeable one between, um, just, say, yeah, like auto and... Uh, the low gears with diffs on. Not to say that it's a bit like if you're going along a road or a light dirt road or whatever, you're uh, probably better off just sticking in auto or high. But yeah, in these sort of boggy sections, you can definitely tell the difference. I think I do try it now. That's a little lighter patch there, but you can see it's starting to bog down now. Especially the rears, they sort of because they they're pretty big tyres, but they're fairly close together, so they kind of half each other's weight that helps plant them into the ground so the front tyres aren't so bad but um, yeah you get definitely more wheel spinning and just not really going too far with the rears but yeah stick it low range diffs on and it's uh, pretty good to go and like I said this has got the 71 inch tyres on so same size as the Cat 745C what used to be the biggest tyres in the game but now they've added that Cat 770G that's got 74 inch tyres I believe but that isn't all wheel drive it really isn't the best off-roading thing at all, that 770G. It's alright for bombing light along the main roads in this game, generally anyway, most of them. Um, yeah, you certainly won't be doing any crazy off-roading with it or anything. Which is fair enough, because it's not exactly the off-roading type. But then that being said, that does also mean I'll probably uh, leave it in the garage. It'll be collecting dust for the majority of my playthrough. Same with the forklift, really. Sadly, heading that way with the bandit. Although there is areas, I still think the bandit is alright in certain places. You can... Uh, at least it's got good power and you can motor along in some situations. But yeah, it's way oversensitive with the uh, uh, how quick it bogs down and stuff. So uh, yeah, this here anyway, there's a Dan, a trailer and a loaf. Because I was driving through earlier, I can't remember, it was, I, think, I believe I had to pick vehicle spare parts up. A flood aftermath maybe or something. And yeah, I, I didn't really get bored, I just kind of got distracted when I got to this point. I think I was making a dinner and all sorts, so I just kind of jumped to something else and then went off doing other things. So I already knew this lot was here, and uh, yeah, you see, I'm trying. I made an actual conscious effort to uh, grab this trailer off the dam instead of just grabbing another one and leaving them scattered all over the place. Give it a time though, I'm sure that uh, will uh, be the case. So again, yeah, to this th thing's credit, even though it is slightly slow generally speaking, it does kind of drive it just a little more realistic again where it's not wheel spinning just permanently so uh, at this point I even think as far as mods go which I seriously can't wait until the ad because uh, this map these two maps really and I actually like both the maps they just yeah feel a bit slow paced I think um, I don't know if it'll ever be possible for consoles it might be too late for us guys but uh, the PC yeah if you could actually just mod the maps themselves to make the terrain less stupid and unrealistic then I'd save yourself having to mod <laughs> each truck individually like in a lot of the trucks case there's certainly trucks that need a boost without a doubt but particularly it shows in these kind of maps yeah there's a uh, the terrain resistance stats themselves 
or however that pans out with the coding, I'm not too sure, but there clearly is a difference on these maps compared to the other ones, like with the Super Snow and Super Mud, so yeah, it'd be pretty cool if you could actually just patch the map itself and uh, tone it down a bit, and then kind of by proxy that would up all the, uh, the meatiness of all your other vehicles. So anyway, a bit more looting. Got them stole, uh, yeah, two lots of metal planks this time. I don't know why, I just had a feeling now. Something wasn't quite right. Looked around like, what the hell? When did it unleash my life? <laughs> See me seriously fighting. Like, well, I don't know. I drive, what, another half a truck went forwards? Like, nah. Gotta get me goddamn professional. You just never know. Uh, yeah, with this Antarctic, a few things I would say. It'd be cool if they could upgrade. As I said, they added a snorkel. I didn't really go uh, deep enough this time to fully test it. <laughs> That's definitely what she said. But I would 99% certain say the snorkel is fixed because I remember when I was messing around in White Valley, like when I after I jumped off the cliffs and stuff, this thing moaned pretty bloody quickly as far as like when the water line had hit. When I cut through the water this time, I cut a bit further over to the left, bit nearer the bridge to purposely... Like, it does go deeper there than over more where I have been crossing. Um, and yeah, it didn't even bring up, like, the dangerous water level or whatever, let alone actually get to the mark where it starts drowning me. So I believe this snorkel is actually legit now, and if that's the case, I probably will uh, take this thing to White Valley pretty soon, just out of curiosity, and see how well it does cutting across, like, that river estuary sea bit to the uh, other little island in the corner. Because I remember at the time when I was driving this, and I said... If this did, if the snorkels worked correctly, like this is a pretty tall truck in the game, so it'll be able to go like quite a lot of places. If it's going to drown this, it's going to drown just about everything. The P60, they're probably sat about as high as this, but yeah, it's mainly due to the tyres. They're uh, you think 71 inch. A lot of trucks are 45, 50 inch, so you've got a uh, yeah, 25, 30 in some cases nearly, uh, like inch taller tyres not far off doubling them. As for this road as well, I just will say, this is part of the reason I was never in any major rush to fix this bridge originally. Uh, my little way of cutting across to where, it, say where I just grab the metal planks, that's where you grab like the dump truck for dump truck trailer. Uh, you can go off and do quite a few things from there. I don't necessarily think it's that much quicker or slower. It does, I admit, it depends which truck you bring. But this road obviously is a longer path, longer to loop round, and it's not exactly a road that just is free flowing and lets you uh, start motoring along so I think my way cutting across the river still works out pretty well but yeah there it is it's finally done and uh, yeah I may I may use it I may not <laughs> I, m I will most likely be using the river more because like I said not only do I enjoy it but it's a pretty good little uh, test of the trucks at the minute and as they haven't really incorporated water into the map a whole lot like I kind of did it myself with their white valley just jumping off the cliff and using that section but yeah, it is pretty good to see some actual proper water obstacles in this game, rather than being just like a little bit of an afterthought. I know there's the odd one, the Zimnigorsk River, that's probably like getting on for an actual challenge. But yeah, most things, it's just a stream that's there for the, the sakes of it. As for the mission, just quickly, I, like I say, it's a bit of a short video tonight, it's one of the few videos that made it under uh, 10 minutes. Uh, yeah, 650 XP I believe, which is pretty decent. And I was just about to end it now, I'd, all I did was drove down the road over my bridge, just seeing if this thing would still get up into 5th gear while I'm towing a loaf, because the game can be a bit trollish as far as towing vehicles go, it kind of slows you down, but this is one of the trucks that was able to motor its way back up. Yeah, I was just about to stop, by chance my wheel dipped down this dip, and then uh, I thought, right, <laughs> I don't know why, I just had a desire to flip the truck, have a little look underneath it, and of course, time sending the goddamn professional. At this point, I was just testing my uh, theory. It does work with a lot of things. It probably doesn't help that this is articulated. Uh, sometimes, if you flip the trailer, it'll just kind of bring the vehicle back to its wheels with it. And it's kind of a much easier way. But uh, yeah, this thing wasn't have it. Like I said, particularly that it's articulated, it's kind of just sticking its back end in the air. But you see, that's why you get yourself a goddamn horse of a vehicle. You can rescue everything. And I'll go and get the trailer too. See, turn in circle. Can he make it? Of course he can make it. Everybody knows horses have superior turning circles. Let me flip the trailer as well. It's the first time pretty much I can think of that I tried to aim the winch up in the air and actually caught the right end of the trailer. Anyway, that's about it for today. Tomorrow I would like to try one of the uh, trials, so I'll probably get that done. But yeah, that's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon.